it's going to be challenging because I have the impression to talk to someone that is just next to me and I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> so let me know if it's too loud or not enough. So let's start. Um, so my goal today is to show you how to build the convincing dashboard with three golden rules and six key tips. But before, let me introduce myself. So my name is Ivan Fornes. I'm working for Amadeus, which is the leader in uh, IT system for the travel industry. So we built systems like a booking system for the airlines or a checking system at the airport, for instance. I've been Tableau and Master also for uh, since 2016, and I'm a teacher. I'm teaching uh, data visualization at the Elec Business School at their master's degree and, uh, and uh, MBA degree. So the first thing that we have to take in consideration when making a dashboard, if we want to have an impact, is this constraints, is that the attention span of people online is today less than eight seconds. It was eight seconds in 2015, and uh, it used to be 12 seconds in 2000. That's a study done by Microsoft in 2015. So that means that we have to help our user in only eight seconds. So we have to be very efficient. And my first tip is to follow those three rules. That's my three golden rules. The first one is that you should start with a clear intent. So you should have a way to have a clear intent is to start with a question to answer or an hypothesis. The second thing is to keep it simple, but not too much. So you want to have simple, it has to be simple to have a new unity and at the same thing, not at the same time, not too much because it has to be engaging. And the third thing is to keep it with a clear hierarchy so that people know to where to start and where to go. So first rule, start with an intent. So let me turn on maybe my mouse that is uh, making those slides uh, going on. So the first rule is to viz with an intent. A good way, a good trick to make sure that you viz with an intent is to start with a question to answer or an hypothesis to test. In my industry, an example would be, for instance, a question which route an airline should open in the coming three years. So it has to be precise, but not too much. And that's not easy. Eh? And that's what many people fail at the beginning. They want to show the data, but they don't want to help someone to answer a question or to solve a problem. Another way to find a good V is to test an hypothesis. How do you test an hypothesis? For instance, you have people that are going to tell you in your company, my biggest customer are the most reputable. And everybody thinks that is true, but nobody tests it. So a good way to find the V's to do is to listen to what people say in a meeting and then test it. And don't think that is true even if you heard it for years and years. A way to say that uh, is uh, what Alberto Quero is said, uh, saying in his book called The Functional Arts, that is one of the best books in data visualization. Uh, and what he's saying is that you should start with a strong focus and you should do as much research as you can, organize and summarize, and then deliver it with a structured and visually appealing manner. What does it mean? That means that we have to do our homework before. We have to understand the question that they have to answer, the problem that they have, and we have, be, we have to be willing to help. I mean, our goal is to help someone in eight seconds. And for that, you have to focus. You have to, be, to make your V's for a specific need. My second rule is to keep it simple, but not too much. And what Albert Ocaro is telling us that is we should use only a few colors to have a unity, but at the same time, you use different shades so that it's not boring. Same thing for uh, font. You can use only a few fonts. Usually, I use only one or two, but many different styles. And if you use different styles, then it's going to be um, uh, engaging at the same time. So how do we do it? I'm going to show you a few examples during this presentation. The first one is this one. That's the visualization that I did a few years ago for my kids, because my uh, oldest son came back from school at 10, 10 years old, and he told me, my teacher told me that today is the longest day. And it's actually in three days, eh, the 21st of June. So I tried to explain him, and I said, you know that on the other side of the world, that's the shorter day. And then it became difficult to explain. So that's why we have this visa. So on this visa, on the um, on the horizontal axis, sorry, 
On the horizontal axis, you have uh, the latitude, all right? So each row is a latitude. And then on the bottom, on the vertical axis, you have the day. So each column is a day. And the only thing that you have on these Vs, it's a heat map. So each dot of the heat map is giving you a color, and the color depends on the number of hours that you have on this latitude and this day of the, of the year. So we are at this latitude, uh, France, Germany, and uh, we are in June, so that means that we have almost 16 hours of light by day. And you can see how it's going to change over time. Digitalization is simple and there is the unity. Why? Because I use only two colors. But at the same time, it's engaging because I use 24 different shades of colors for each number of hours that you can have in one day. And same thing for the fonts. I use only two fonts, but in a very different ways. Here it's, in, it's uh, gray. Uh, you can see that it's black. Here it's bold. Uh, it can be in white. So I, I use different uh, style because I want my Vs to be engaging at the same time. So that's my second rule. And my third rule is to have a hierarchy. So people have to know where they start to have a big picture and where they have, yeah, they have to go to find the details. And they're in sight. So you can keep in mind this heat map that is well known. You know that people start from the top left and go to the top, the bottom right. That doesn't mean that you have to use this path. You can have your own organization. But it has to be very clear to the people where they have to start. And they remember that you have eight seconds to deliver everything, eh? to engage them, to un they have to understand how to use your Vs, and they have to find their insight, all of that in only eight seconds. So let me give you an example. That's uh, with a Vs that was made by Adam McCain, um, that is one of the author in Tableau Public that I like the most. And that's these Vs that he did. This visualization is the Game of Thrones, and that's to present the season six recap and see how easy it is to know where you start. So you have the families that are here, the different family of Game of Thrones. Then you move on and you have the character within each family. Then you move on and then you can see that you have the episodes that are here. And then you have the different scene with the different vertical bar, which means that within Within one second, you know where you have to start and where you have to go and how you can follow up, right? So now that we have our frame, our free rules, let's look at the six tips to have an impact. My first one that is very important is to add context. You have to help people to know if you, the number that you display, the bar that you display, the line that you display is good or not. Are they doing well or not? And that's with the context. So one context that we all use a lot, that's the year-over-year -year comparison, but it's often not used very properly. So let me give you an example. I'm in the travel industry, and here you have the number of bookings made anywhere in the world to come to Germany for a specific month. I'm not going to tell you the year and, and the specific uh, months, but let's say that is in two months, uh, so in August. So that means that we have already 87,000 people that book a flight to go to Germany in two months, so the flight is not deported yet. And we see that we have in gray here what we had last year, okay? And in orange is what we are doing this year. That's where most people stop. They stop at this level and then it's up to the user to do the variation, the calculation. You can give much more context. Look, first if you tell them where you end up last year, 346,000 bookings, that means that we have a long way to go and that most of the booking are done in the two last months. So even if we are in advance, that doesn't mean much because 85% of the bookings are still to come. The second thing that you can do is help them to do the calculation. Why in so many dashboards, the user has to do the calculation between last year and this year? That's what they want to know. The first thing that they want to know is the context and compare to last year. So we can do this calculation for them, 23,000 bookings in more than last year. And then that's not enough. What they are going to do most of the time is do the calculation to calculate the percentage over time. And here we can see that 200 days before departure, we were at the same level than last year. But uh, as we come and as the days are coming uh, to the departure, the variation between this year and last year is increasing. 
and is currently at 36%. So here I am giving a lot of context to the user only with a year-over-year -year comparison. Another example is this one. I made this visualization because the French government one year in 2015 said that uh, to calculate or to test the wealth of a country, we shouldn't use the GDP anymore, but they were proposing 10 KPIs. The KPIs are like uh, CO2 emission, uh, life expectancy with good health, uh, what else, education, things like that. So to do a visualization on this aspect with my 10 KPIs, and because I want to give a context, help the people if they are doing well or not, first I ask them which country you want to test. So in my case, it's France. And then I let them select their benchmark. So they are going to compare France to a benchmark that they are going to make themselves by clicking on the different country that they want to use as a benchmark. And then we can compare the two. So look, now for each KPI, each of those 10 KPIs, I have a bar. You can see France with the black line here. And when France is doing better than the benchmark, then the variation between the two is in blue. When I'm doing less well, then the variation is in gray. That's the first uh, context that, that gives them, but that's not, that's not the only one, because I'm also telling them over time how this variation is changing. Because each bar, it's uh, an history of 10 years. And also, I'm helping them to compare the two, because that's what they want to do, and I don't want them to do the calculation. So for instance, for uh, investment on research, that you see here. Um, we wonder if you'd be able to do another one after this, this time. Sure, like sure. Uh, what, what you see for the CO2, uh, for the investment on research, for instance, of a country is that uh, France is doing better than the benchmark by 16%. Okay, again, I'm giving a context. All right, so my second tip is to segment, to spot the outlier. Spot, uh, finding the right dimension to segment your visualization is key. I found a lot of insight with that. So I don't know if you know this viz, but it was done by Robert Rousse, and that's a great one. That's a comic, actually, that was done with the, uh, data, the Superstore um, data that you have uh, with, uh, with Tableau when you install it. And what he's doing is the saying uh, that uh, we have a dashboard to do uh, with a meeting. It's a quarterly uh, sales meeting. They did this dashboard that you see here, which is by product type. Each uh, column represents uh, a region. And as all you know, uh, Tableau in the East is not doing very well. The table, sorry. Tables, we have a lot of deficit, right? And then the boss is getting mad and he's asking us to fix it and why. And uh, then we have a super data store in the middle that he's going to say, I just need to do a drop, uh, drag and drop. I'm going to add a dimension and I'm going to segment more and I'm going to discover why. Or at least what we can do. And now we end up with this graph that is almost the same as the one that I am on the top, except that I'm adding a dimension. And here the dimension is, when you make a profit, it's going to be in gray. When uh, the sales is uh, not making a profit, then it's in red. And then I can display the two. And what you had before, it's only the dot. But now on top of the dot, I have those two bars that are telling me why I'm doing well or not. And look what we discover. We discovered that for office machine on the west, we didn't see anything before. It was a little bar, so we were not worried. But here now we know that we have a huge potential of increase of uh, profit. Why? Because half of the sales are with a deficit and half are with a profit. And because it's a visa that was well done, then we can dig in and click on the bar and then we see why. It's because those two products uh, are sold as a price that doesn't allow to do a profit, right? So segmenting is key. Sometimes it's difficult to segment. You need uh, advanced calculation like uh, uh, artificial intelligence. In my company, for instance, we use it to segment uh, travel that travel for leisure and travel, uh, travel for business. But sometimes it can be very easy. My third rule is to keep some air on your visualization. So I stole this rule uh, from designers that design uh, websites. 
And what they say is that when they design a website, one third of the space should be used for text, one third by white, and one third with a picture. In our case, it's a visualization. In our world, it's more than one third with uh, the Vs is most of the time half of the space, but you have to keep in mind that at least one fourth of the space should be with nothing. Okay, why? Because if it's too much, then it's not going to work, and less is more in our case. Look at the website of uh, Apple. You see that they use this rule. We have one third of picture, one third of text, and then one third with nothing. In this case, it's black. And it's much more engaging than another website where you try to put too much things. And then you can click and see another dashboard. They can uh, dig the, um, uh, go on the bottom of the dashboard and see more details. They are, they have, you have different ways to show more information. But the first thing is to engage them. Okay, so to engage them, you need error on your visualizations, on the overall uh, presentation, but also within your Vs. And look how you can simplify a visualization with this GIF. So you see that we started with a very complex bar chart. We are re removing the labels, removing the borders, simplifying the borders, uh, reduce the number of colors. And we end up with something that is much more engaging than we had at the beginning. Okay, so give, leave some air within your Vs. My fourth, cap, uh, fourth uh, tips is to choose your KPIs wisely. The tendency is to use all the time the same KPIs. You have to customize your KPIs with the goal of your Vs if you want to be efficient. Remember, we have only eight seconds. And also, each KPI has to be easy to understand. It's a communication tool that you have to use. They don't have to figure out how it works. Uh, so it has to be simple. So let me show you an example. Here on these Vs, I made this visualization to uh, show the country that are promoting Paralympic compared to Olympic. But because in the Paralympic and the Olympic, you don't have the same number of middle and you don't have the same sport neither, I had to find a KPL that would allow me to compare the two. So what I use, it's a very simple one, is the percentage of medals won by the country for a specific year, as you can see, and for a specific uh, country. So if you look at the Olympic here, we have this blue bar that is telling you the percentage of medal won for a specific year, a specific country. And on the other side in green, you have the same thing for Paralympic. And then in the middle, I'm comparing the two. Again, I have to help my user. So I'm saying that the US is doing very well at the Olympic, yes, but they are doing less well than they do on the Olympic for the Paralympic, uh, almost every year, which is not the case of China that is uh, doing also pretty well because they are second in terms of rank uh, lately, but they are doing much better. They are much more present for the Paralympic. Okay, so these specific KPIs, that was a simple one, the percentage of medal one, allow me to do my, what I wanted to do, show the variation, the presence in Olympic and the Paralympic by country. All right, so let's move on and let's have a look to the next KPI, to the next tip, sorry. Like you, I'm a data guy, and one thing that uh, I forgot when I be began is that I was focused on numbers too much and I forgot that text is key. Key and, and uh, text and illustration is actually what people look at the most or a lot. Why? Because the first thing that they are going to try to do when you do a Vs, is try to decode your Vs. How am I going to read visualization? That's why they start by the text and by the pictograms. Uh, so that means that we have to help them. So the first thing that you have to focus on is to explain how to use and read your Vs. So you, look what I use. I use um, verbs and uh, arrows to tell them where they have to interact. They shouldn't look for it. And one thing that I do a lot also is to explain how they should read it. Uh, and how they should read it, you would be surprised to see how many people don't understand a bullet point, like uh, a bullet graph like this one. Okay, we are in data guys, but many people don't understand the bullet graph. 
And I can tell you, it's more than, more than the majority. So we have to spend time to explain it, teach it, and also directly in the Vs, explain it. We have to use text and also um, uh, images uh, to guide our users. Why? Because images are read 60 times thousand faster than a text. And remember, we have only eight seconds to deliver an insight huh? or to answer a question. So you can use, uh, like you see, menu with uh, different uh, images, um, or you can explain your KPIs with also uh, a little image. You may think that it's difficult to do, but look, if you're on PowerPoint, the only thing that you need to do is download an image from the net, then you bring it on uh, PowerPoint, then you are going to add on top of it a shape. It's a circle in this case. I'm going to put the circle on top of my uh, icon. Then I'm going to bring the icon on top. Then I need uh, only to group the two elements together. When they are grouped, then I can save them as a PNG. That's important, a PNG. And then I can use this PNG from Tableau. So you see, you don't need to be an expert in uh, drawing or things like that. I'm not. Uh, but with PowerPoint, it, it can be easy. My fifth, uh, oh, I'm still on the fifth uh, tip, is to, in uh, explaining and guiding, one way to guide people is to put any interac interaction that you have on, on your uh, visualization. So in this case, it's a filter next to what it affects. So you see that here I have a, a filter that is going to reduce the minimum of my y-axis. So that's why I'm putting it right where the minimum is. Same thing, if I have a filter that is going to reduce the span of my horizontal axis, I'm going to put it right there. So a way to explain it is uh, to my students is that your mouse should follow your eyes. If you need to set something on one side of the, of the dashboard and it affects the other side, it's not user-friendly. Sometimes it's not possible, but try to do it as much as possible. And my last tip is to adapt, and that's key. So you remember that you have to start with a clear objective and a clear intent. So when you have your clear objective, you have to keep in mind this rule. By William Cleverland and Robert Mark Gill, I'm sure many of you have seen uh, this study. What they said in uh, 1984 is that to compare uh, accurately, you can use bar chart. And that's why we use bar chart a lot, right? And that when you use uh, 3D or ARIA or Color U, it allows only generic comparison. But at the same time, on the other end, you have another study. And a book uh, wrote by Manuel Lima, a great book called The Book of Circle, that is telling you that we, are, we have a, a preference for circular shape is deeply in, ingrained in all of us from birth. Why? It's because for thousands of thousands of years, the human has been exposed to the nature, and on the nature, most of the shapes are curvilinear. So that's why circular visualization are more attractive, but at the same time, they are less accurate. So what should we do? Should we use a line chart, as you see here? and be more accurate? Or should we use a circular one, as this one, that is showing you how the temperature is increasing by month, so each section is a month, and then you see how it increases. It's not precise, but it engaged a lot of people on Twitter, and this visualization uh, became viral. It was done by Ed uh, Outkin. Why? It's because it's a circular visualization. So, what should we do? Should we be more accurate or more attractive? It depends, okay? And I just don't like when some people tell me, you cannot use a pie chart or you cannot use a circular shape. It just depends on what you want to do. Um, so let me give you an example. I did visualization a few months ago to track my workout goal. My goal was to do 1,000 200 kilometers uh, in 2018 by using different activity. So you see the activity here. 
uh, running, uh, skiing, uh, climbing, things like that. And uh, each activity has a different color. Then each section of the circle is for a specific month. So you have January on the top and you have April on the right side, right? And you can see if I am on track with my goal yearly in the middle, so I can see year to date if I am on track. I can see monthly if I am on track because this also uh, circle is dynamic depending on the goal that I choose. And you have also the, the weekly goal that you need to reach in order to reach my um, end of the year goal, right? So this V's got a lot of traction because it's circular. Uh, it's a good V's to have an overview, but at the same time, that's not the one I use myself when I track my workout. That's the one I use, okay? So that's maybe a boring V's, uh, only with bars and uh, uh, only with lines, but I can see where I stand very easily uh, from my goal, that is this uh, uh, line that you see on the background, I can see where I stand compared to last year. And uh, at the week level, I can see precisely the trend because all the week are using uh, same horizontal shot. Horizontal line, for, sorry. So that's a, a big dilemma when you make a visualization. But Ludovic uh, Tavernier find a way. Maybe we can put to the two together. And here you have a circular V that he did. I'm sure many of you have seen this one for the Ariane V in New Orleans. And why I'm showing here now is because you have an attractive section in the middle here because it's circular. Uh, and you, what we look at is the weather of Seattle uh, over time. So each section of the circle is a month. Then you can see how the temperature change in red here. You can see uh, the rain in blue, and you can see the wind in white. So this section of the screen attracts a lot of people. And then if they want to uh, compare accurately, then they have the other section on the left where they can compare with the bar chart, the rain, the wind, and the cold, or the, the, the temperature. So again, it just depends on your, on, on your goal. If you want to put a visualization on the website, then a circular visualization may be a good choose. Uh, if you make your visualization for analytics or for someone to track his goal weekly, then the bar chart may be more appropriate. So to conclude and to sum up, so we have a frame, the three golden rule. Start with a question and intent with a strong focus. Then keep it simple, but not too much. Keep it simple with using few colors, few fonts, but different shade and different style. Use a clear hierarchy so that we know from where we start and where we go, where we have the overview and where we have the detail where we are going to find our insight. And then the method in six tips is to add context so that we know if we are doing good or well, or bad or, or, or good. Segment to spot outliers. Uh, use white space so that your visit is engaging. Keep your KPIs, uh, find your KPIs wisely, um, and they have to be simple and adapted to the goal of your Vs. Explain and guide and adapt. So never say that we shouldn't use anything, it just depends. And that's it, if you have any questions. I don't know how you can ask questions, but uh, with the mic maybe. Thank you.